Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Now today we're going to be talking about something that hasn't come from AIM, but anyone who does have an AIM Wi-Fi enabled device, like an AIM Solo 2, a DL, a Micron 5S, an MX series, even an Evo 5, will be really excited to hear. And that is, there's finally an app that you can use to be able to analyze your AIM data. Now this app has come from a company called Lapsnap and was released a couple of weeks ago and I've been using it now for a little while and I have to say that it's a really good way of being able to grab the data off your device and be able to do some quick analysis in a nice and easy to use interface. So this tutorial that we're going to be having a look at now is going to go into all of the aspects of using this app, how to be able to download the data, how to be able to analyze the data and look at some of the features that uh, are available to anyone who's using it. Now I might caveat at this point that uh, I haven't been asked to make this video, I've not been paid to make this video, but uh, I do have an affiliate link down below which gives you, uh, the user, 20% uh, off the paid version of this app. And we're going to talk about the paid version as we go through this actual tutorial. Before we get going, however, I do want to talk about some of the pros and cons of the app, just to make sure that we can talk through these as we look at the applicability of whether this works for you. Now on the pro side, it's an app and it's something that we've all wanted. It's available on our phones. Quick analysis uh, is going to be easy and readily available having this uh, available to us uh, and carry it around with us in our pocket. It's something that we've all wanted uh, for a long time. In addition to that, the interface is nice and easy to use. It uses some of the major um, channels that we talk about as being simple and applicable to everyone, whether that's just a speed trace, looking at GPS longitudinal data that gives us a really good proxy in terms of acceleration and deceleration, plus other aspects of analysis like overlaying the lap uh, on an actual map. So there's a lot of really good um, uh, applications that you can do uh, with this app. Now, in addition to that, there are other aspects of the app that I also like, and that is uh, once you've actually downloaded your data on your phone, you can also analyze that data elsewhere on your tablet. So if you happen to be downloading it on your phone, and we'll talk about uh, why downloading on your phone makes a lot of sense as we go through the tutorial, uh, you can also access these files on any other devices, and they seem to be held on a server or in the cloud, and it's a nice way of being able to analyze that data at a later date uh, on a different device. Now, if we want to talk about some of the negatives that have happened with this, uh, or have happened or should be applicable to you as we look at this particular app, there are a few. Now, the first is that you have to have an AIM or a GoPro, I might add, if you've got a GoPro with GPS functionality, which I believe is the GoPro 6 um, or, uh, or newer, and you can also download the data from there. But if you're using an AIM device, it has to be a Wi-Fi enabled device. So if you're somebody like me, for example, with the car that you can see in the background, that's got an Evo 4S on it, so I actually can't use this app. But that said, I've been using my Solo in the car as well to be able to use it uh, as part of the demonstration and testing uh, for some of this app functionality, and I've found it to be uh, really useful. The second thing is, is that you have to, and this is probably going to be the biggest one of all, is that you have to be connected to the internet to make this app work. Now, the reason being is that as you download the data, it gets uploaded either onto a server, into the cloud, wherever it goes, but uh, you need to have that connectivity to be able to upload that particular file. And then the app will only work if you're connected to the internet. And so if, for example, you're at the track and there's no Wi-Fi or cellular network, and many of us have been to the track where we know that exists, this app might not necessarily be for you. The last thing I will say about this app that um, is either uh, going to be okay with people or it's not, is that this is a pay for app. We're all very used to having the software on our PCs from AIM to be able to analyze the data. And when you talk to the developer, they're not looking to be able to replace that software that's available for you from AIM. What they're looking for is to give you the convenience and ease of being able to use the app at the track. That said, it's a pay for model if you wanna be able to store your data files and be able to access them at a later date. That said, the free version gives you great functionality. It would allow you to be able to understand whether this app is truly something that's going to be useful for you. So without further ado, let's get into the uh, tutorial itself and look at how the app actually works and uh, look through all of the aspects in terms of how to analyze data and how to see if this really does make any sense for you to be able to use. So the first thing we need to do is connect our Wi-Fi enabled AIM device, in this case I've got a Solo 2, to my phone. So I'm gonna click on settings and uh, I'm actually on the Wi-Fi page right now and one of the things you'll notice in the networks is my AIM Solo 2 shows up. So I'm just gonna click on that 
and then hopefully very shortly it will connect to that AIM solo and we can actually then go and download the data. So once this is done and you can see the tick has appeared there, I'm going to close this down and I'm going to open up the LapSnap app. And as I do that, right now you'll notice that uh, there are no sessions in my actual uh, app itself. Now there's two options if you have no sessions, you can either click on the big add session button in the middle, but what I recommend is to uh, start using the plus button on the right hand side because this is the button that you'll use every time to download sessions. So I'm going to click there and it's going to look for my device and so hopefully it should find my AIM Solo 2 which it has and I'm presented with all of the sessions that are available on this particular device. And so I've got a lot on here that I've downloaded and um, or I should say I've recorded on the AIM Solo 2 that I'd like to download. So I'm going to click on this top one here and I'm going to click on this down arrow. What it's going to do now is it's going to download the session from my AIM Solo 2 just as it would do if I were using any of the AIM software. And uh, it's at this point that I recommend that when you're using the LapSnap app that you should use uh, a mobile phone. And the reason I'm saying that is that if you're using uh, a device, for example, that happens to have um, just Wi-Fi connection, if you're using the Wi-Fi connection to connect your AIM Solo 2, you don't have the option of being able to then upload that file into the cloud or onto the server, which will allow you to be able to analyze the data on the actual app. Because it's an important factor to note that this app requires you to be connected to the internet to be able to download that data. So if you're using a tablet um, uh, or an iPad or anything like that that doesn't have a cellular network, you won't be able to upload that file until you're next time connected to the internet. So anyway, now that we've downloaded that file, um, the next thing we need to do is to label it. And so we don't have many options, but here I can say that it was a dry session. And then I go into vehicle setup. And this really is um, information about the car you're using. Now I've put in here that this is my uh, Van Diemen RF88. But if you wanted to add any vehicle, you just hit that plus button and you can put in a motorcycle, a car or a cart and have as many of them as you like in here. But because I've already got my car here, I'm just gonna select that. And then all I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna click on save. And it's at this point that the uh, loading of the session, but more importantly, that session being uploaded um, onto uh, any server or into the cloud is very important because if you aren't in an area where there's a Wi-Fi network, you won't be able to use this app to be able to analyze that particular file that you've just downloaded. And so right now you can see it says processing. This usually takes uh, a minute or two just to be able to upload it. And at that point you can start analyzing the data. Okay, so I've downloaded the files. I've actually downloaded a second one here as well for comparison later on. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load up that session we just downloaded with 14 laps. So I'm gonna click on this. And the first thing we're gonna see is information about that session. We're gonna see what the top speed was, the average lap time, the best lap time. The ultimate lap time, which is very interesting because what the app actually does is it breaks the uh, track down into sectors or segments and then calculates what your best lap would have been if you drove each of those particular sectors the, um, in the same lap. And so it's rather like a, a theoretical best lap time. As we scroll down, you'll then see all the laps and it'll give you information about each of those. But one of the things you may have noticed is that the average lap time is better than the best lap time. And that's because right now, the outlap and the inlap are being used to be able to calculate that. You can leave this as it is, or you can potentially just um, delete the outlap, which I can do here by scrolling to the left. And you can also delete the inlap, which I can scroll down and do this here. And this will uh, clean up the uh, average lap time on this session so it's more accurate. Now that we've cleaned up the laps, the next thing we want to do is go in and do a bit of data analysis. And so what I'm going to do here for illustrative purposes is I'm going to compare the best driven lap with the ultimate lap that's been created by the app itself. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to load up my fastest lap, which is right here. And I'm going to click on it and I'm going to see some information about this particular lap in a few ways. The first is I'm going to see the lap as it was driven on a mapping software, which is fantastic to be able to see how the actual lap was driven and the line that was taken. And I can zoom in here, for example, and be able to show, you know, the actual line that was taken around the corners. The next thing we're going to see is a measures graph. And anyone who's familiar with AIM devices will know that uh, the measures graph is where you can see information about the channels. In this case, it's GPS speed or GPS longitudinal information about what the car was doing on track. And so if I hold my finger down here, I can scroll to the left and the right. Not only will the cursor move on the map, but you'll also be able to see what the actual 
uh, information was, such as speed or driver inputs at that particular point. Now you may be wondering, how do you see the GPS longitudinal information? And it's this button on the bottom right hand side, that if I click here it changes the measures graph from speed to GPS longitudinal information, which we often use as a proxy for driver inputs, because down indicates deceleration, and as the, uh, as the uh, line goes back up, it indicates acceleration, and so it's a great way of being able to see what the driver is doing. Interestingly, I can see that information in two ways. I can see it based upon uh, the measures graph, or I can click on this button on the left-hand side here, and I can change the way that the line on the graph is represented instead of it being a solid blue line. If I click this, I can see the GPS information, and here it's been colored as red is deceleration and green is acceleration. So it's a great way of being able to see heavy braking zones, acceleration, and what the driver's doing. Now the next thing we want to be able to do is to start analyzing a lap. So I've changed it back to per lap color here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a lap. So if I click here on select lap, I have the option of being able to see certain pieces of information that uh, you know I can use to compare it. I can use the best lap, which I've already got. Uh, I can use the ultimate lap, which is what we're going to do. You can use one from the leaderboard, which as the app gets more popular, there may be other people who've posted their laps here at Silverstone National. Or if you have the pro version, you'll see the other lap, which is from one of your other sessions. And we'll talk about that later in the tutorial. What we're going to do right now is we're going to click my ultimate lap because everyone can do this free version uh, or paid version. And now we can see the information overlaid in a few different ways. The best lap driven is in blue and the ultimate lap is in red. And so now we can start seeing what the performance is going to be based upon um, what you could have done versus what you did do in this particular session. What you'll also notice is down at the bottom, a time distance graph has appeared. And this is useful to be able to identify where on track you're either gaining or losing a lot of speed. Right, so what we want to be able to do here is use the time distance to be able to get an idea of where time is being gained and lost at any given point in the lap. So I don't have to scroll very far here to be able to see that uh, as I go down the straightaway here, there's a tenth of a second difference between the ultimate lap and the best driven lap. And so the question is, is why? As we look at the measures graph, we can see that the ultimate lap is carrying one mile an hour faster than the best driven lap. And we can see that's being carried all the way down the straightaway. So the question is, is where has that actually, uh, that time been gained and lost? And it's actually, as we scroll back, as we're going through the actual transition of Cops Corner itself. And so as I scroll a little bit here, you can see that uh, if I start with braking, just watch the speed trace, you can see that the deceleration is pretty good. Um, but uh, when we get to the point um, of the lap when transition from braking, turning in, going down to apex and thinking about corner exit, the blue lap is still slowing down a little bit versus the red lap has actually made that transition and is actually at the point where it can start accelerating again. And you can see here that the blue lap's at 93 miles an hour versus the red lap's at 95 miles an hour. Now that speed is carried all the way down the straightaway and it's a tenth of a second, which actually in many instances is quite a big deal in relation to these competitive spec type series like Formula Ford that I run. And so I can see this information a little bit more detail by clicking here and seeing if there's something that's happening with the driver. And so this is GPS longitudinal. You can see at this point, you know, the deceleration um, uh, curve here. Now it's a bit difficult to see. So what I can actually do is I can actually pinch out a little bit here and see this in more detail. And what I'm actually gonna show is that as we decelerate, we can see that the red lap actually breaks the hardest a little bit later but that the blue lap is breaking a little bit harder sooner and actually carries that. You see how the line flat lines on the blue instead of the V shape, which is on the red? That's the brakes being held a little bit longer, which is taking that extra two miles an hour off, which is actually preventing um, you know, a release and going back to the accelerator. Now the question is, is why is that actually happening? And it might be something to do with line. And so the last thing we're going to show on this analysis is if I go back to the map and zoom out, you can see that the red lap takes a lot more track on the exit, which might have allowed the car to sort of, you know, allowed me to free up the wheel a little bit more, carry that speed through the corner, and then just roll it all the way down the straightaway. And so this analysis has allowed us to be able to see um, where time is being lost, why it's happening in terms of speed, and what the driver is doing in terms of making that transition either better or worse, depending on the lap you're looking at. 
Right, so the next thing I want to be able to show is something that often gets referred to as lap replay analysis if you're using the Race Studio 2 analysis software. And it's something that you can do on the actual LapSnap app. Now, so far, what we've done is compare one lap versus the other and looked at those exact points on the corner and said, oh, this particular lap is braking sooner than the other one or holding the brakes or taking a different line. But what we can also do is we can see the visual representation as two dots drive around the track to be able to see where the dots are separating and getting closer. And that's a good representation as if uh, these were two cars on track. And so what we can do is right now I have a 104.6 loaded here and I'm going to click on select lap. Now earlier on I said I was going to show what happens if you've got the pro version. With the pro version, you can go to um, my other lap and you can refer to other sessions that you've driven either on the day or at previous visits to the track. And so here I've got a session from November 5th. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna go and find the fastest lap, which is right here. And this is gonna load up as the reference lap to be able to see where the differences were. Just like before, the time distance reappears down here and we can start seeing right now that at this particular point on track, there are differences um, in relation to what the driver has done. But what we want to do is we want to see what would happen if both those were effectively cars driving on the lap and what would happen in relation to a distancing that you could see um, as if you were driving uh, yourself. And so I'm going to click this middle button here. And this middle button is brilliant because what it does is when you press play, it will start to demonstrate how the two dots separate themselves as you drive around the track. And so if I click on the play button now, you can see the two dots um, are visually represented um, as if it were a car on track. And you can start to see at certain points that the dots start to distance. And so you can see on the um, ultimate lap, you can see that the red dot has started to distance itself from the blue lap. And this is a great way of being able to see where that time is gained and lost on track. If I let that play a little bit more, what we'll probably notice is that that dot will start to distance itself further coming through this area, which it has, because of the fact that right now the red ultimate lap is doing 84 miles an hour versus the 81 miles an hour of the lap that we drove or the uh, 104.6 that's here. We can also see this in a little bit more detail because we can zoom in and just have an idea in terms of what's happening overall. And if we let this play throughout the entire lap, we can see how that dot starts to distance itself. At this point, for example, you can see it's even further. So this is a really good way of being able to visually identify where time is being gained and lost on track if you'd rather use that than necessarily the measures graph. And we can see, for example, we're just about to come up to a very large delta down here on the measures graph where it goes from minus 1.2 to half a second slower. And now we can see on track how much further apart those dots have actually become. And if I press play at this point, you'll also notice that um, what will probably happen is that dot will distance itself even further as we go down the straightaway. And you can see that happening right here. And if I just press pause just before the start finish, this would be the distance uh, between cars after one lap should they have driven this particular uh, lap versus lap. Okay, so the last feature I want to be able to show as part of this tutorial is something called drone view. So right now I have two laps which we're comparing, the same laps we looked at earlier with two different sessions. And if I click on the play button right now, you're going to see the two dots as they would drive around the track. Now this is a bird's eye view looking directly down at the track. But if you click this button on the right hand side just here, you'll actually switch to something called the drone view, which gives you a slightly different view in relation to the uh, actual laps that were driven and the line that was taken. So if I hit the play button again now, you can see that there were different lines that were taken and a slightly different view, which is very much like what the driver would see if they're in the car, or at least a little bit closer to what the driver would see. So it's a nice way of being able to visualize the lap and be able to understand the difference in terms of lap versus lap with a slightly different view than necessarily just the overhead bird's eye view. There you go, that's the tutorial and thanks so much for watching. Now, as I think about the final thoughts about the app itself, I've been lucky enough to have this app for the last few weeks. I've used it uh, at uh, Trackside and I found it to be something which is very easy to be able to grab the data and be able to analyze it quickly. Also, it makes uh, the ability to share it with others and point at certain things that you can see on the screen 
a nice thing to be able to do. That said, the reduced functionality and the fact that I'll probably want all of the data channels that are coming in uh, from my Evo 4S in my race car will result in me continuing to use the AIM data. And it's interesting uh, that the folks who built this app don't want to create a substitute for the AIM software. They just want to create something which is grab and go while you're actually at the track. Now, if you do decide that you want to be able to upgrade to the pro version so you have that history of all of your sessions, then don't forget there's an affiliate link in the description below that will allow you to get a 20% reduction in your cost. And that just leaves me to be able to say thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I uh, hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you want more videos like this and more videos on AIM and AIM data analysis, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And that just leaves me to say thanks so much for watching this video.